I want to teach today on why we baptize in Jesus' name. Why we baptize in Jesus' name. You know, we get in a big way of preaching and teaching. If we ain't careful, we'll, we'll, we'll forget. I got all these young men and young ladies here. And we get in a big way of preaching, you know, and I know I say a lot about it. I'm sure they know, they know Acts 2.38. But uh, I want them to know, know what. And I make no apology for that. I make no apology for being a Bible teacher. None. Amen. I make no apology for that. I know some places that's kind of old hat. You've done away with a lot of that. And, uh, but uh, uh, I guess I've been thinking a lot about Everything my old pastor said, but he, he told us that, uh, he, he said, you know, they, these airplanes, said, now they got these airplanes where they can feel them in the air. That he's seen pictures of. I don't want to be on an airplane that they're feeling in the air. Are y'all hearing me? I want to get plenty of fuel on there before we get up in that air. But so far... They've not developed any way to put gas in your car going down the road. You got to stop. You got to stop and open the tank up and stand there and put the gas in. Well, that's kind of what Bible class is. It's where you put gas in the tank. And so you kind of have to, kind of have to stop and slow down to do that. And uh, so this morning... Matthew chapter 28, starting at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Well, there, there's another one wandering around up there. He don't have any power. Amen. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So my thought today is why we baptize in Jesus' name. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we're thankful for your presence and your spirit and your power. We love you today. We glorify you. We exalt you, touch us today. Dear God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we love you, we magnify you. Touch, Lord, touch the minds of our young folks, God. Help them to get a hold of this, Lord. Lodge it in their heart, Lord. Nothing can move it. Dear God, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Being born and raised in Kentucky, we were kind of raised around uh, illiterate folks, and, and I have no criticism for illiterate folks. I was born, raised around my grandfather; could just, he could barely read himself, and uh, other family members had other family members in, in that age, in my grandfather and grandmother's age. You know, folks went to work early to make a living, so. Uh, so illiteracy abounded, a lot of illiteracy. And then uh, education wasn't thought much of. Uh, most of them had made their life in, in, in coal mines, so their, their children worked in coal mines. And they expected their kids to work in coal mines. It was really a challenge trying to have Christian school in that part of the country because education wasn't deemed to be important. You didn't have to have a lot of education to be a coal miner. And uh, 
So illiteracy abounded. I never will forget hearing a lady one time telling me I was talking to her about Jesus' name, baptism. And she said, I'm going to tell you what, that I'd rather believe Jesus than Peter any day of the week. I'm going to do what Jesus said to do. And you can do what Peter said to do. And, uh, of course, that was a highly ignorant statement to make. As if Jesus and Peter were saying two different things. But if I could, if I could, if I could have you, your time for just a little while today, Amen, brother Andy. These boys are scoot down, scoot down, boy. Look, brother Andy. Give you plenty of room. Don't get nothing on his coat. Pray for him. <laughs> oh, have some fun with him, praise the Lord. Uh, old brother uh, Brady has told me he looked like Benny Hinn. <laughs> but I think it's a pretty suit. So you wear it anytime you want to. I think it looks nice. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, God is good. Amen. Amen. Number one. Number one, in this, in, this, in this deal of, well, I'd rather believe Jesus than Peter. Jesus didn't write a book in this Bible. There's no gospel according to Jesus in this Bible. Now, the closest you've got to it is a revelation of Jesus Christ where, where uh, uh, John acted as a, a scribe writing down what Jesus was saying, but they, and the rest of the Bible was inspired of the Holy Ghost. Men wrote, they was inspired, but this is interesting because really the book of uh, Matthew, here's the first point. The book of Matthew was written after the book of Acts. Nobody wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before Acts because Acts is where they received the Holy Ghost. So it re really and truly the book of Matthew may not have been written till a in the A.D. 40s or as late as the A.D. 50s. So you had, had all them people in Acts being baptized before the book of Matthew was even written. So they may not even have ever heard what Jesus said about baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So the book of Matthew, of course, we, they've got it character, uh, uh, in category there, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because the life of Jesus was before the book of Acts. But these men didn't write this till after Pentecost. So we don't know how long down the road it was, before even Matthew 28, 19 was written, they're doing all these baptizings in the book of Acts without the book of Matthew being written. That's number one. Number two, you got to always ask, who is Jesus talking to? And who is it? A lot of folks get to what he said, but they don't get to who he said it to. In verse 16, then the 11 disciples went into Galilee. And uh, he was talking to them. Go ye, the 11 disciples, and, and uh, 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 teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So it was the 11 disciples that received the commission to baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So number one, we... They understood what to do. Brother Andy, you can get me the 16th chapter of the book of, of Matthew and, and about verse 18, 18, 19, 20. Brother Cotton, get me the 24th chapter of Luke, verse 45 through 47. And Brother Dallas, you get me St. John 17 
and verse 20. Pray, can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Adam, how about give, give me a St. John 14, 26. I may be moving a little slow. But I've done this right. lots without notes many times, but I am getting a little older. Praise the Lord. So, so I may be going, going it just a little slower here. Amen. Why we baptize in Jesus' name? We're the only people in the world that obeys Matthew 28, 19. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Come here, Brother Adrian. Help me here. Quote me 15 scriptures right now on baptism in Jesus' name. So we won't, oh no, that ain't what I want me to do. <laughs> He'd have fixed me if it had spouted off a nun, wouldn't he? <laughs> Amen. But if, come here. All right, do this like, this like we're going like to baptize you. It's been a long time since you've been baptized, I can see right now. Amen. Now, if I, if I take this fellow down to the water, Preacher takes this fellow down in the water. I never will forget, there was a, where you can breathe. <laughs> Amen. But uh, when, I, when I was a boy, there was a family in our town that they went to Howard Goodman's church. You heard the Happy Goodmans? Well, they went to Happy Goodman church, and, and, I, and I was going, no, no, I'm not through with you yet. And... Uh, they was, uh, I was down there witnessing them about baptism in Jesus' name. And boy, I'd been there like three times. And finally, I showed up this day, and here was a, there was a preacher there from the church. And he was going to uh, take care of me. And we were going back and forth. And I, I asked him, I said, Well, what is the name of the Father? And he said, The name of the Father is Jehovah. That's good. I mean, he had thought that now, that part of it. I said, so if I come to church over there Sunday night and Howard baptizes somebody, he's going to say, I baptize you in the name of the Father Jehovah. And I believe the guy would have lied and said, yeah, but then people were sitting there and him. No, that didn't happen there. I said, so really, y'all don't baptize in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father Jehovah, and they baptize, or they don't say the name Jehovah, then they've not baptized in the name of the right. Father Jehovah. I said, well, I, let me ask you this. When they get down to the name of the Son, I said, do they say, I baptize you into the name of the Son, Jesus? He said, you know Jesus is the name of the Son. And them folks sitting on the couch, they, they all shaking their head. So they didn't baptize. Okay, let, let's do this again. And I'll let you say that. But when that preacher takes a fellow down to the water and said, upon the confession of your faith, oh, we're not through, you're getting ready to run. Upon confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And he puts him under the water and brings him back up. He's lied. He's lied to the man he was baptizing. He lied to the congregation, and he lied to God. He told this young man he was going to baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, but he, never, he, he, he didn't do it. He said he was going to do it, but he didn't do it. Father's got a name. You can, be, you can sit down, son. You've done a good job. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Will you, Brother Obed? Amen. And Brother Obed. Brother Obed is a father. Brother Obed is a son. Brother Obed is a husband. Brother Obed's an uncle. He's a grandfather. He's a cousin. He's a nephew. He's an uncle. Well, praise the Lord. And he has a spirit. It's a bad one, but he has one. Amen. Well, you can't have everything, you know what I mean? Praise the Lord. But that's not his name. He 
fulfills every one of these roles. He, he's not a grandfather to his wife. You know, I may getting, be getting way too deep out here, praise the Lord. <laughs> but he fulfills, he fulfills, he's one person, but he fulfills specific roles that he doesn't fulfill to someone else. He's a husband to his wife. He's a father to his children. He's a grandfather to his grandchildren. He is a son to, was a son to his father. He's a nephew to his uncle. He's an uncle to his nephew. All of those roles are different roles. But that, but his name, no, they may call him uncle. And they may call him dad. And they may call him granddad. But that's not his name. He has a name. And his name is Oban. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. So, you, you may be seated. So, he told him to baptize. And who did he tell? Verse uh, let me get back to it again. Verse 16. Then his 11 disciples, he told his 11 disciples to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get that Luke 24 before I get uh, Matthew 16 there. Luke 24, 45. Move on up. Yeah, let's go on up. Get verse 44 first. 44 first. Then he said unto them, Yes. These are the words which I spoke unto you. Yes, yes. While I was yet with you. Yes. That all must be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Which were written in the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. And in the prophets. Mm -hmm. And in the Psalms. Concerning me. Go ahead. Then he opened up their understanding. Then he opened up their understanding. That they might, that understand. They might understand the scripture. Now, I'm going to take the word of the folks that had their understanding opened. Evidently, before this time, their understanding was somewhat limited. But Jesus opened their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. I may not understand the Scripture. Brother Dallas may not understand the Scripture. There may not be a preacher living on the face of the earth today that would understand the Scripture, but these men understood the Scripture because Jesus opened their understanding. So that I'm going to take anybody's word on how to be baptized. It's going to be the folks that had their understanding open that they might understand the Scriptures. But he don't finish it. He don't stop there. What does he say? Yes, yes. Thus it is written. Yes, yes. Thus the whole Christ to suffer. Yes. And to suffer from the dead, rise from the rise dead. Rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance. And that repentance and remission, and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning where? At Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. He opened up their understanding. He said, when you guys get ready to preach, they're not going to preach. They're not going to preach until after Pentecost. They're not going to do any preaching until after God's filled them with the Holy Ghost. So he said, he said, I want you to know when you guys start preaching and you're going to preach among all nations, you're going to preach about repentance and remission of sins in his name. Right? And it's going to start at Jerusalem. Well, I tell you why I baptize in Jesus' name. I baptize in Jesus' name because the folks that had their understanding opened by Jesus and were called by Jesus and were sent by Jesus and were commissioned by Jesus and were taught and instructed by Jesus. Hey, when they went to Jerusalem like he commanded them to go to Jerusalem, and they stayed there till they got the Holy Ghost. And when they got the Holy Ghost and got ready to preach about repentance and remission of sins, they did it in Jesus' name. Right. Glory to God. They had their understanding open. Now we'll go to, to the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 16. This old deal that I, now I'd rather believe, I'd rather believe, I'd rather believe Jesus than Peter. You know, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that rejecteth you, rejects me. Well, praise the Lord. So uh, they had the message. They had the message. Amen. All right. Where were you at, brother? 1618 of Matthew. And I say unto thee, and I say also unto thee, yes. that thou art Peter. Yes. And upon this rock I will build my church. Yes. And the gates of hell shall be. Now it's not built on Peter, but it's built on Peter's revelation. Blessed art thou, Simon, but Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed this unto thee but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this rock of revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Go ahead. And I, will give unto thee the I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And whatsoever, Peter, whatsoever you bind on earth yes. shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let me explain to you. It was already bound in heaven before Peter bound it on the earth. And it was already loosed in heaven before Peter loosed it on the earth. This wasn't something that Peter uh, uh, got uh, 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 invented himself. And somehow heaven said, well, I tell you what, if Peter said it, I'm going to back it up. No, no. It was already bound in heaven, and Peter was only saying what was bound in heaven. And Peter was only saying what was loosed on earth. But said, I want you to know what Peter says is binding. Right. What Peter says is binding. I give to thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want you to know Peter bound that on the day of Pentecost. Yes, he did. He bound it because it was bound in heaven. Glory to God. Pope of Rome. He didn't give the keys to the Pope of Rome. He didn't give the keys to Billy Graham. He didn't, be, he didn't give the keys to D.C. Moody. Amen. Yes, sir. No, no, no. He gave the keys. He, uh, D.L. Moody. <laughs> Amen. He gave the keys to, the, uh, the, uh, to Peter. Right. And Peter took them keys out on the day of Pentecost. Because what, what, what were them keys? Them were keys of understanding. They weren't some literal keys. He gave them the keys of understanding. He opened up their understanding Amen, that they might understand the Scripture. Said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys of understanding. Amen, and you're going to bind on earth. It's going to be bound in heaven. You're going to loose on earth. It's going to be loosed in heaven. Amen, and, and nothing's going to change. That's how it's going to be. Where are you at, Brother Dallas? What's that? Yeah, John 17. Give me verse 17 and verse 20. Sanctify them them through... Jesus is praying. And he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. truth. You know, you know, the Catholic Church believes that the church in their edicts has power to supersede the word of God. They believe that when the Pope speaks ex cathedra, that it is, it's the word of God just like anything written in the Bible. Matter of fact, it supersedes that. And that's why they had all these councils. Council of Nicaea, Council of Constantinople, and then they kept on having, having councils, and even have them today. And, and, and they, can, they can make decrees and when they make them decrees, they supersede the word of God. You know, they had, uh, uh, I think the last time that the Pope really spoke ex cathedra was the Assumption of Mary. That was in the 50s. That he said, Mary ascended 
bodily and soul into heaven. And uh, so, so they accept that, you know, they accept that, that Mary went into heaven. And uh, not only that, Mary is able to, uh, Mary's the meterix in heaven where you talk to Mary, Mary talks to Jesus, Jesus still talks to the Father, Father talks to the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost talks to the angels, angels talk to the saints, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I just come back. You, have you ever seen that done where you have a have a bunch of folks stand up and you say something in their ear, and then time it gets to this last year, they repeat what said. It wasn't nothing like it was said. I'm afraid that's what'd be about my prayer. Amen. Time we got around all them folks. Amen. But uh, but they believe. As a matter of fact, they just made a decree. Just just this, not an ex cathedra declared decree, but they just made a decree this last week. You know, the Catholic Church has always been very strong on divorce and remarriage. That, you know, you couldn't receive the sacrament if you'd been divorced and remarried. But uh, this new pope has changed that. He just changed that this week. That uh, he kept the ban on homosexuality where it was. That's going to be next. And, uh, and and he moved that away because they've got so many Catholics that's been divorced and remarried. And, and you know... Trying to keep them in, trying to keep them in the church. Now they've not made that, they've not made that church law as yet. But he's, but he's made that, he made that decree, not in ex cathedra, but he just did it through his teaching this week. But ain't you glad that sanctify them through thy truth and thy word is truth. Oh, this book is so. Verse twenty. Now, he's praying for his disciples, and he said, Neither pray thy I for these alone, but for them, that's us, which would believe on me through what? So, Jesus, now I may not get my prayer through, but I believe Jesus gets his prayer through. He prayed on us that would believe on him through the words of the apostles. That's why we baptize in Jesus' name. We baptize in Jesus' name because we believe Jesus' prayer is heard and we're only made believers by the word of the apostles, not by creeds or dogmas or tradition. But, and that's why we're apostolic. Right. Unashamed apostolic. Right. That's right. Because we believe on him through the words of the apostles. I like this in St. John 14, 26. What does it say, Brother, Brother Adam? This is, this, is, uh, this, is, this is Jesus again. Jesus is chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17. He's with his, this, he's with his apostles. And uh, he's making these promises. And listen to what he says. I need me a Peter. Praise the Lord. Amen. Herod, you me be a Peter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So what, what does he say? Give me Acts, Acts 2. Acts 2 and 4. Acts 2 and 4. We're we, we going we, 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 we to get there. Acts 2. Acts 2, 1 through 4. All right, give me this, brother. What did you say, brother? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll do what? He shall teach you all things. Yes. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Now, did Jesus say Matthew 28, 19? Yes, he did. Did he say it to Peter? Yes, he did. Verse 16 said it was the 11 disciples, didn't he? So here, Peter, here, okay, now, let, let, let's get the Acts 2, Acts 2, 1 through 4. What does it say? When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Yes. They were all with one accord in one place. Yes, yes. Yes. They filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like 
as a fire. Yes, yes. And it sat upon each of them. Yes. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right. He, they, they all got the Holy Ghost, didn't they? Yes, yes. All got the Holy Ghost. 1 and 13, the first one named in that upper room was Peter. Peter was the first one named. And then, verse 15, and in those days Peter stood. Okay? Verse 26, the last part of that verse. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Okay, so you got Peter. Peter's there. Get me back. We're going to do that 1426 again. Yes. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Well, wait, wait, okay, so Acts 2 and 4 said they received the Holy Ghost. Peter received the Holy Ghost in verse 4. Are y'all with me? Peter received the Holy Ghost in verse 4. Can you say amen? amen? Matter of fact, all the 12 received the Holy Ghost in verse 4. Can you say amen? amen. Peter, okay, so Peter receives the Holy Ghost in verse 4. The Bible says he did. Jesus said when Peter receives the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and do what? Bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said unto you. So when Peter got the Holy Ghost, he wasn't going to forget about Matthew 28, 19. He was going to remember Matthew 28. If he got the real Holy Ghost, he is going to remember what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19. But he was going to understand what was said, Luke 24 and 45. So Peter, when Peter received the Holy Ghost, and then, then, then that's not all. You're in Acts 2 there, aren't you, brother? Okay, Acts 2, verse 14. And, and, and then uh, verse 37. Acts 2, 14, and then verse 47. Okay. But Peter. Yes. Standing up with the eleven. I'll let you guys be the eleven. Just a minute. Come here. Praise God. Oh, we're pretending. Amen. They're not, it's not really eleven up. But Peter, Peter's not doing this by himself. Peter's standing up with the eleven. Let's say this is John. Well, you know what happened to John in Acts 2 and 4? He received the Holy Ghost. You know what happened to James in Acts 2 and 4? He received the Holy Ghost. You know what happened to Andrew in Acts 2 and 4? He received the... So all 12 of these guys have received the Holy Ghost. And Peter doing what? Standing up with the 11. All 11 of them had received the Holy Ghost. Well, brother, brother Adam, what did you say the Holy Ghost would do? when the Holy Ghost would come about what Jesus said. It would bring to what? Remembrance. So, let's say Peter, forgetter was working good. Let's say Peter got confused and mixed up. You got James, and you got John, and you got Andrew. And all of these guys had just received the Holy Ghost. And when they received the Holy Ghost, it was going to bring them remembrance. Whatsoever Jesus said. Now move on down to verse 37. Now when they heard this, yes. they were pricked in their hearts. Yes. And said unto Peter and the rest of the Said unto Peter and what? To the rest of the apostles. Peter and the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren, what shall we do? But Peter was the spokesman. Then answered Peter. Go ahead. Then said Peter unto them. Yes. Repent. Repent. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name 
among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Here we are in Jerusalem. Here we are in Jerusalem. Jesus said, go tarry, Luke 24, 49. Go tarry until you be endued with power from on high. Acts 1 and 5. And he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but until they received the promise of the Father. So here they are. They're at Jerusalem. And they've just received the Holy Ghost. And when they got the Holy Ghost, it was going to bring to them remembrance whatsoever Jesus had said unto them. And Peter gets up there and he said, Repent. Nice. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now wait just a minute. If Peter got excited or got confused or misunderstood, he wasn't standing up there by himself. He was standing up there with the eleven. And if he misunderstood, which he wouldn't have, because Jesus gave him the keys. Well, praise the Lord. Here was all of these eleven that they had heard in Matthew 28, 19 too. But when he said, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not a one of them said, whoa, ho, hold your horses. That's right. Not a one of them said, wait, what about what Jesus said? You know what happened to these 12 folks? They had their understanding open. Yes. And they understood what the name of the Father was. They understood what the name of the Son was. They understood what the name of the Holy Ghost was. So when they said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, they understood. They wasn't the one of them shaking their head. They wasn't the one of them saying, man, he missed it on that one. Because they had received the spirit of truth that brought all things to remembrance whatsoever Jesus had said unto them. So when he said the name of Jesus Christ, you know what they done? They stood behind him and scotched him. Well, now that's just Peter. Okay, now we're not going to finish there. Look on down where it said, As many as received his word were gladly baptized. What's about 41, 42? Some were along in there. 41. What? Forty. Okay, go ahead. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Yes. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Okay, get the next verse. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles. That's got an S on it. Yes. Not the apostle doctrine. Yes. But the apostles doctrine. The apostrophe is not in between the E and the S. The apostrophe, the apostrophe is after the S because it wasn't Peter's doctrine. It was the apostles' doctrine. Well, praise the Lord. So as many as received his word were baptized. But this wasn't going to be a Peter's standalone doctrine. But this was going to be the apostles' doctrine. Yeah. All right, y'all can sit down. This is why we baptize in Jesus' name. It's the apostles' doctrine. Now we're going to spend a little time here in Acts. Acts, Acts 4 and 12, Brother Andy. Brother Cotton, Acts 8 and 12, and 8 and 16. Brother Dallas, Acts, 9, Acts 10, 43 through 48. And Brother Adam, Acts 19 and 6. Or 1 through 6. Brother Morris, 22. Acts 22 and 16. Well, praise the Lord. So they understood what the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost was. Jesus said, Jesus said in St. John 5, 43, I am come in my Father's name. Well, I came in my Father's name. My Father was a F, so guess what my name is? 
no, you don't have to be brilliant to figure that out. Hebrews 1 and 4 said he inherited his father's name. In St. John 17, Jesus praying said, I have manifested thy name unto the world, the name that thou hast given me. I have manifested unto the world. So he had manifested the name. Can you say praise the Lord? All right, Acts 4 and 12, what does it say? Neither is there salvation. Okay, get me, maybe start at 10. Be it known unto you all. Yes, yes. And to all the people of Israel. Yes. That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, mm. whom God raised from the dead. Yes. Even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Yes. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. Yes. Which is become the head of the corner. Go ahead. Neither is there salvation. Everybody say neither. Neither. There's no salvation in the word father. You can, you, you can say father, 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 father all, all day long and you're not going to get any salvation. There's no salvation in it. There's no salvation in the name son. There's no salvation in the name Holy Ghost. Well, praise the Lord. Folks that, folks that hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name have not been baptized in a saving name. Repentance and remission of sin could have taken a little side journey here just a minute. Uh, hold your finger there and give me Hebrews 9 and 22. Uh, and Brother Cotton, get me, I think it's Romans 3 and 26, I think. 9 and 22, what does it say? And almost all things yes. are by the law purged with blood. Yes. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So, Jesus said repentance and remission of sin should be preached in my name. Right. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Folks that have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ have not had their sins remitted. Because remission of sin is in the blood. And Jesus connected the blood and remission of sin together in Luke 24, 47. And Peter connected together in Acts 2, 38. So without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Go ahead. Well, who's got that uh, 3 and 26? Yeah. To declare, I say, yes. at this time his righteousness, yes. that he might be just and the justifier of him maybe it's, in maybe it's 25. Whom God has set forth to be yeah. Whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation or a, or a covering through faith in his blood. Yes. For the remission of sins that are past. Brother, we get remission of sins through his blood. Amen. Amen. Oh, Brother Obed is a, he's a Samson. The reason he is a Samson, he has Samson blood in him. Right. That's how you're a child unless, unless you're adopted. You're a child because you have, you have the blood. The blood, the blood is what makes the name. The name and the blood are inseparable. So praise the Lord. Right. That's why they do them uh, blood tests on kids to see who's, see, see who's DNA, to see who's, who's young and there is. If there's some kind of uh, debate about it called your name is what your name because of whose blood you have in you. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I had a friend years ago. I won't, I won't say the name, but, but Sister Triplett would know him. And years ago, there was, there was this young man, and uh, this man had raised him as a son, but he supposedly wasn't his son. And uh, so there was a marriage deal there. And the uh, father, uh, so this boy... His boy got married, and he had children. And so when uh, he contracted some kind of disease, and uh, uh, 
said, well, bring your father in here. If you bring your father in here, I'm sure there could be a match for this because, you know, because of the blood. Well, they brought the father in there and uh, uh, just as soon as the test was taken, the father left. He just left right, right then. And uh, so the boy didn't understand it. He didn't know why his dad left so soon. And, and uh, they got in, in there and the uh, doctor said, I'm really not the one that should be the one telling you this. He should have told you. And yes, and he ain't your dad. He ain't your dad. The DNA test proved that he wasn't his dad. Well, the man that kind of raised him and his son was really was really his dad. That's a long story, and we'll go into all that. But uh, 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 but he 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 had. He had bore the name of this, uh, of who he thought it was his father. But when they done the blood test, it wasn't his father. Called the blood declared the name. And the name declared the blood. Well, praise the Lord. The father didn't die. The Father's the eternal spirit. Father didn't die. The Holy Ghost didn't die. It was the Son that died. Well, praise the Lord. If there were 12 members of the Godhead, which there's not, it wouldn't make any difference. We'll get to that scripture later. You're baptized in the name of the one who died. Right. So, remission of sins and the blood are joined together, and Peter connected it together. They're, they're at Pentecost, and that's why I said, neither is there salvation in any other. Back to Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none in the name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. So that preacher didn't say the name of Jesus Christ over you when you was baptized. The blood did not remit your sin. Called remission of sins takes place at the invocation of the name. Right. In the water. The water don't remit your sin. The blood remits your sin. Revelation 1 and 5, unto him that washes from our sins in his own blood. 1 and 14 of Colossians, whom we receive redemption, the forgiveness of sin in his blood. Colossians 1 and uh, Ephesians 1 and 7, whom we receive for forgiveness of sin in his blood. It takes place in his blood. Glory to God. And the blood does that. The blood does that when that convert is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And if, and, and if you've not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then your sins are still on you. I don't care how much you run. I don't care how much you talk in tongues. I don't care how many visions you see. I, well, it don't really, it, none of that matters. Because you still have your sins on you if you've not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Had a real nice, there's some real nice Trinity folks. I had a real nice Trinity man tell me one time, he said, well, you know, Brother Epley said, I've got the Holy Ghost. Well, that's wonderful. He said, what would be the main difference between me and you? Matter of fact, when Sister Epley is up in the hospital, uh, her... Uh, Neurologists come in there, and uh, 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 he said, "You're a pastor." I said, "Yeah." Well, what kind of church do you pastor? I said, "Well, I'm pastor Racine Apostolic Church." He said, "Well, I was raised in Four Square. I was raised in Four Square Church. That's Amy Simpleton McPherson's church that she founded." And uh, I don't think there's a Four Square church around here, is there? I hadn't seen any. So, so evidently he must go to probably Assembly of God, or Church of God, or some charismatic church. And he said, uh, he said, now, you know, we were taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, now, what would be the main difference between us and you? 
I said, well, the first thing is, I said, we're not Trinity. We don't, we don't believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. Okay. So we believe Jesus is all of it. Jesus is everything. We're not Trinitarian. And uh, I said, then, I said, we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Are you all baptized Father, Son, Holy Ghost? We believe Jesus is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And I said, but on the Holy Ghost, here's where we're different than you are on the Holy Ghost. I said, y'all believe that the Holy Ghost is for an added blessing or a infusion of power. We believe it's a new birth. He said, well, I have to say that is interesting. I don't know if I've ever heard that before. <laughs> So I told him without being ugly, I didn't, you know, he wasn't saved, praise the Lord. Because there, there's, there's no use of being rude or ugly to anybody, I don't think. But neither is there salvation. Nobody, no, nobody's saved. That's what I, that's what I had in, that's, what, that's the problem I had with Brother Urshan and Brother Saban years ago. You know, I don't believe you ought to ever be ugly or nasty or rude. I don't think we got a right to do that. But at the same time, you got to be honest. And they were having that discussion with Walter Martin. What they had done, they had tricked them. They had tricked them in there. And, and, and they, they thought they were going there to discuss the uh, some further debate, but come find out they got in there and they had this televised debate. And, uh, of course, Mr. Martin, they called him the Bible Answer Man on radio for years. He's dead now, praise the Lord. So he ain't on the radio no more, praise the Lord. That other guy's Bible answer man is on there, Hank somebody. Hank the hound dog, amen. <laughs> and, uh, but in the, in the debate, Mr. Martin, he said, now, I've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I've spoken in tongues. I speak in tongues from time to time. Am I saved? He just point blank asked that. Am I? Am I? Am I saved? And uh, you know, well, they crawfish what they did. Well, I, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I believe in being kind. I believe in being nice. I don't believe in being ugly. I don't believe in being in your face. But I'd have looked him right in the eye and said, I believe you're sincere. I believe you're probably honest. You probably love God, but no, you're not saved. Because they use that forever against, against, against them. Well, they wouldn't even tell them. Well, I think, you know, I don't believe you all be in people's face. But I think if you're asked, you need to be honest and, you know, I believe you love God and I believe you're sincere and I believe you're devout and maybe you've had an experience with God of some kind. But ain't nobody saved outside this message. Nobody saved outside this message. Praise the Lord. Nobody is, neither is there salvation in any other. For there are none of their name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And if that name has not been invoked in baptism, then their sins have not been remitted and they are not saved. Where are we at now? Acts 8 and 12. We've got to hurry. i only got a few minutes to go. When they believe Philip preaching and the name of Jesus Christ Brother, he preached. What was he preaching? The kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, and he baptized both men and women. Well, you get down here in verse, get verse 14 and then we'll. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem which, heard, When the apostles which is Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word, they sent in him Peter and John. Peter had the keys. He opened up the door to the Jews, and now he's opened up the door to the Samaritans. They were the mixed Jews. That, these were Ahab and Jezebel's descendants. The, these were Jeroboam's descendants. Then were the folks that had the two calves descendants. Hey, Amen. Then were the folks where the woman told Jesus, well, we worship here at this mountain. 
Jesus said, you worship, but you know not what. So salvation is of the Jews. <laughs> but they're down there at Samaria. When they heard Samaria receive the word of God, they send them Peter and John. What did they do? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. For as yet he, the Holy Ghost, was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized. That's how they were baptized. He preached the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ and baptized both men and women. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now here we're down in, in uh, Acts 10. Move on up there to about verse 6 or 7. He said, and he shall tell you what thou oughtest to do. 5 and 14 of, uh, I mean 11 and 14 of Acts. 10, Acts 10, the angel's talking to him. The angel's talking to him. And, and verse, verse 6, 10 and 6. The angel's telling Cornelius this. He's lodging with Simon the Tanner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hey, hey. Oh, well, now, now this is this is went to working. What kind of guy what was he? Eleven, eleven. Uh, give me uh, oh, one, one, ten, chapter ten, one and two. Well, I didn't mean to preach you out, brother. I will beg you. Don't pass you on. Man, I baptized Jesus' name, knocks him out. He's back. What? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. All right, he was what? He is devout and he did what? Where are you at, Brother Andy? Acts 11, who should tell thee words? 14. 14. Here, here, here's what the angel said. Who should do what? Tell thee words. Yes. Whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Which, what would he do? Tell thee words. Yes. Whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. What did he do? Tell thee words. What kind of man was he? Verse 2. Yes. Yes. What, did he, what was he going to tell him to do? Tell thee words. Yes. Which thou and all thy house shall be saved. So he feared God and devout, but was he saved? No, sir. This verse here says he wasn't saved. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? He feared God but he wasn't saved. He was devout, but he wasn't saved. All right, move on down to verse, where we're at down to verse, yeah, 43, yeah. To him give all the prophet witness that whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin, that through his name, whosoever, and while Peter was preaching about remission of sins in Jesus' name, what took place? While Peter yet spake these words, what words? Remission of sins in Jesus' name. And while Peter is preaching about remission of sin in Jesus' name, said the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard the word. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, for they, they knew they had it because they heard him speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and thy household can be saved? Who and what can any man ever be water that they should not be baptized that have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? What? And he commanded them. To be, be baptized in the name of the Lord. I had a radio program years ago in Florida, and it was a calling program, folks. I, I, I'm not going no further. Boy, I've got lots more. Amen. They're coming to me. Amen. I, the caboose is not even went around the corner. Amen. <laughs> but I could tell y'all's cups full and running over. Praise the Lord. But I had. But this guy would call me, and he was a Seventh Day Adventist. And we had the same, nearly every day we had the same conversation. 
he had called me. I want to know about the fourth commandment. Y'all keep the fourth commandment. And I'd read him this. And he commanded them to be baptized. I said, do what you do. You get baptized in the name of the Lord, and we'll talk about the fourth one. You don't need to worry about the fourth one. You ain't done this one. And this is what puts you in. Don't worry about keeping the Sabbath day. You got to worry about even getting the Sabbath getting in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I never did get him, I never did get him baptized. I don't guess. Amen. Well, I hope this helps some of you guys a little bit. Why are we baptized in Jesus? And this ain't near all of it. This ain't near all of it. But this ought to be enough you can put in your arsenal. You put them, you put, you put it in your arsenal. We ain't a bunch of people just doing what we're doing. We're, the, we're, we're folks of the book. I don't care what the Bible It don't matter to me what the Bible says. I just want to do what it says. It wouldn't make no difference to me. Amen. Brother Harrington, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make no difference if the Bible said one white sock and one black sock. It wouldn't, that wouldn't, I wouldn't care. I'd just get me a white sock and a black sock and put it on and say, why are you doing it? I'm doing it because the Bible says that. Right. What do I care? That's right. Folks won't fuss about getting baptized. Well, what do I care? I don't care. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to be right. All this about making heaven my home. I want to make heaven.